Apparently it's up to Fine's birthday on the 8th of April. Who knew? Hello everyone. As I said in the Minecraft episode that should have gone out earlier today if I've got my videos lined up properly, I'm just going to do a little review of my build that we did towards the end of last month for the Cross Community Games Redstone competition. Now I was the sole representative for the Slipgator server, so the build was all my work. I'm not bragging, I guess. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is hopefully show it all working in one go because it didn't in the video that Family Craft Dad put out with Mumbo uh, reviewing the builds. Which, by the way, you should go and watch first, I guess. Because um, the other builds were pretty good, by and large. Uh, anyway, it's it was the slowest, the longest running of the builds, but Mumbo liked it. And if you've watched the video, you'll actually no, you won't know, I guess, because I don't think it's said in the video. Um, I came second. And um, we'll talk about why I came second when we get to it. Because in terms of the scoring, um, Family Craft Dad server and the Slipgator server got the same score. Uh, different amounts in different scoring criteria, but we got the same final score. And it was only really one thing that stopped this being the winning build, which I am frankly amazed by because it was a one-man job over about 16 hours, I think. Um, so, yeah. Lag. Uh It's, I, I'm honestly um, honoured to have done that well, really. Yeah, this is actually a tiny bit cheaty because I can't leave this area and I just barely managed to build this layer of glass here on the side of there by going to like, just there. Um... I would have had a lot more slime block launchers in the build, but I couldn't get them to work consistently that easily. Um, so uh, it's mostly water driven, which is fine. Um, it's a shame armor stands don't get into mine carts or anything. They used to, but they don't anymore. So, yeah. So we have an enderman here. We have boats and hose in the mine cart with chest because Mumbo was the judge. And in a minute, the minecart is going to empty, go off. Yeah. This was actually one of the last things I added to the build. I mean, all three of these sections, really. These dispensers were not originally here, it was just a water stream. This, I think, is a bug. I mean, I'll, I'll go over all of these things properly um, after we've run through the whole thing. So I've got an Enderman wandering around stealing my grass. I say an Enderman. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, I'll come back to that. This is pretty much my pride and joy. Um, this was one of the first ideas I came up with for the competition and it just works beautifully, usually. Some, I mean, Jade's tried to run the world and had problems with it a couple of times, which is odd. Now this thing I'm going to sit right next to and hope it works. Yes, it does. That launcher sometimes fails. I don't know why, really. Five, four, three, two, one. And, um... Unfortunately, it failed during the run-through where Mumbo was judging. And that one slime block, that one slime block, is what cost me the win. And I'm really annoyed about it, because I had so much trouble getting that to behave consistently, and it failed at the critical moment. But, that's life. Come on. Uh, this one here... 
also failed, but it failed because of server settings, not because the mechanism didn't work. Um, it didn't dispense a villager because of server mob spawning settings. Um, which is kind of annoying. But it was alright. I didn't get docked any points on that one because it was the server, not my build. So you'll notice um, the main theme here is use of mobs, which I don't believe anyone else used. So that would be cool. Um, yeah, we're nearing the end. But Mumbo really liked the fact that I had all the little pieces that the journey would be interrupted and something would happen to allow it to continue. No one found the secret room apart from Jade, but only because she knew it existed and she used spectator mode, like the hacksing hacks as she is. This is the one truly non-resettable part of the build because I can't regrow the plant, the chorus plant, exactly like that. Um, everything else can be reset manually. That can't. Well, I mean, it can. I'd, I would have to literally build an entire, well, half grow, half build, because it was half grown, half built. Um, we kind of have slip arrive looking like that. So he gets a tuxedo put on. And the fireworks go off, the beacons come on, and the armor stands drop, and the meat shower goes. So, that is the build, all working in one go. Let's run through it. So we start off with being pushed into this water stream. Mumbo didn't know you could push armor stands up slabs and stairs. Um, so I feel I taught Mumbo something, which is nice. I wasn't the only build to use that feature, but I don't think other builds used it quite as much as I did, um, because I've got so many water streams. Hello. Uh, yeah, you're a penelope, and that's penelope, not Penelope. It's slipgated references. Apart from the Enderman, who are penelope, the Pigman, who is stupid Kevin, and the Snow Golem, which I forgot to name, I think. Yeah. Every other... Oh, and these chickens, because they're spawned from normal eggs, so they aren't named. But every other mob in this thing is called Kevin. Uh, except the witches, they're Jessica's. Um, right, so, water streams, that's all straightforward. Slime block launches up into water, nothing too special there. This little slime block ice booster that I designed, um, I'm really quite pleased with, because it's quite compact, and it's fairly reliable. The spacing you can have is 9... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. And it just works really well. He says as it fails. Um, this The purpose of this block is to stop the entity going too far if these things are close together, because otherwise then they'll be out of range of the slime block, because they'll be like there and it won't hit them. Um, let's try that again. Why is that making me hit? There we go. No, something's not quite behaving there. Um, it's odd with players anyway. Players are less reliable than armor stands and mine carts and so on. Um, so that's just a nice track. We've got the slip gator symbol in there. I think this was la literally the last thing I did before I submitted the build. Um... And then we've got a little thing here where it goes off the edge, drops down, and is pushed along there. There's no redstone involved in this part. It's just a water stream. I just did the painting thing because it was fun to do the painting thing. Why not? Um, this little spiral staircase was you know, okay, but with reasonably early on. Slime block launch, slime block launch. And then as I said... Originally, this was just one long water stream that led down here to this point. Um, and towards the end, I came back in and added these three things and put the dispensers in. Uh, this one is fairly straightforward. We have a, a monostable, I guess. This is classed as. 
So it only fires once because for some reason I'd end up with two Endermen all the time, which is weird because it shouldn't have fired more than once, it should still have only fired once. But, uh. Oh, I know what the problem. No, that's not what the problem is. Um. I'm actually a little surprised it wasn't a problem because that going into that block would also power that block, and I'm lucky it didn't just fire the nether star back into there. But, um. It was really just straight redstone along here, and for some reason that would trigger two Endermen spawning. I still don't understand why. Um, so I put the dispensers in. Or oh, droppers, actually. Dispensers spatted out. Just to make sure I only did it once. And it fire off the minecart, which would then trigger this. So the uh, minecart with chest would go down, drop its boats and hose in there, have a fantastic time, then it would come back round and trigger the detector rail there, which releases the water, which makes the Enderman teleport away. And we've got a simple little, I guess, an AND gate, except with an inverted input on one. Um, so that this redstone line triggers after the minecart has arrived here and the Enderman has gone off the pressure plate. So that's that section. And it comes along here. This, I think, must be a bug. It's a very interesting behaviour. Uh it only works with water and lava, as far as I could tell. It fires more slowly with lava, which is very interesting. But if you have an observer pointing downwards, probably it might work sideways. I don't know, I haven't tried it sideways. Let's try it sideways. Um, let's just do it over here. But yeah, I think this is probably a bug. I imagine it's not intended behaviour. The way observer's face always seems backwards to me. Um, yeah, it works sideways as well. And probably also downwards. Well, no, I don't know it works downwards. Uh, I mean, upwards. D -d 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 however you define your directions. Um... Yeah, so it works with water and lava, and it only works with redstone. You can't put a block here, it won't power the block and do it. It'll just fire off one redstone pulse, um, because of the water updating underneath it, and then that's it. But if you put redstone directly on it, you keep getting that pulsing, so you get a clock out of it. And it's really weird, but it was super useful for this. Um, I will show you the world I did some of this designing on and discuss that one a bit more. But anyway, this just fires off chickens until enough of them get on a weighted pressure plate. I actually used a weighted pressure plate for its designed purpose, which is pretty much the rarest thing in Minecraft, I think. No one ever uses weighted pressure plates for their weighted pressure plate property, but I did. Um, so when enough chickens have accumulated, it sets off the next bit. And we come in here, these piston, well, this piston extends, which powers uh, no, they were already powered by the redstone block because it was here. This piston would extend and stick to it, and then when the signal drops, it pulls it back, which pulls these back, which allows the snow golem to start shooting at the pigman until it knocks it onto there. And I think this was literally the last edition. I think. Or maybe the mushroom was. I can't remember. And then we've got a sequence of slime block launchers. The only extended sequence of them, which took some fiddling to get right. Um, you'll notice it's not precision from the fact that I've got these as just an open gap. It's one of those things. And then we have my pride and joy, the witch one. Drop seven columns of witches. Over seven item filters that take each of the witch drops. As each drop comes in, these lights will come on. And when enough of all of them have accumulated, it fires off the rest of the circuit. Drops the lava to kill any stray items so we don't have massive energy lag going onwards. And comes back up here turns that off and fires the armor stand along. Then we have some more of my boosters, then it puts it down here, drops it there, and this slime block launcher was the bane of my existence. Um, oh yeah, it's not gonna... Uh, oh, that's interesting. It shouldn't have fired me that far. That's very interesting.
So that didn't work either. Um, what would happen is the armor standard just stop on there. I can probably demonstrate that actually. If I'm, because we discovered collectively people doing the competition, not just me, that if you're too far away from the armor stand while it's doing slime block launches, it can behave very inconsistently. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I now move away, no, that didn't demonstrate it. Let's try again. I'm just going to come over here. See, on that occasion, it just shoved it right over the top. Um, but what would typically happen is the armor stand would get to here. This would fire first for some reason, and it would just stop and be like right on the edge of that sign block. Sending another one through, triggering this again, would fix it because then that would get projected upwards and fired across. But yeah, this was the one that behaved. That, or should I say that misbehaved the most often and unfortunately it misbehaved on the critical occasion. So then we came to here again you can see this is something I added after the fact from the fact that it's done with a piston just blocking which is like a really it's less obvious with the dispensers because they look like they were meant to be there all along this is quite obviously bolted on because it was and um, so again we have a monostable, uh, no sorry, we have a pulse, and we have the hoppers, so there's a time delay, and then this fires off, grows the mushroom, as soon as the mushroom grows we've got a block here. I tried to do this with observers originally, to observe that the block appeared up here, but these wouldn't grow to the same height every time, and also um, they refused to grow while the observer was there, it was the other issue I had, so I just went to this. And then that comes up here, turns the uh, dispensers off so they don't keep clicking, lifts that up, Armstone continues. And then we come to the mob stuff. So we have a llama, a wolf is dispensed, the wolf is scared away by the llama, drops down here. A skeleton is dispensed, the skeleton is scared away by the wolf. Sometimes the wolf would chase the skeleton, but that's not a problem because we still end up with something on the pressure plate, which is fine. Quiet, you. Um, and then that would trigger the slime block launch here. Then we come over here, more slime blocks, water, ocelot scares the creeper, same system, it's just mob scaring mobs, because mob mechanics like that aren't used very often. Um, you can use them to filter mobs out of a mob farm, but that's about the only thing I've ever really seen them used for. So I came up with that idea, and I was like, I'm going to do every single one I know of, and I think I covered all of them. Except... I guess Iron Golem's chasing zombies, but eh, that would have been a pain to do, I think. Originally, this bit here was going to be a dispenser firing arrows at a button to trigger this, um, and then I tried a, an array of pressure plates. It's just too inconsistent. I was worried it would fall over at a critical moment, which something else decided to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had literally a dispenser, a block, and the button in that block in, right in front of the dispenser, and it could still miss. And it's just like, no, this is not consistent enough, I'm not risking it. Um, this is my own little design for vertical redstone transmission. I tweeted this to Tango Tech after watching one of his videos. It involves a water stream dropping down to an observer and it works as a T flip flop and it works quite well so I incorporated it into this. Now it comes under here we have the tree that I wish I could hide that redstone torch better but what are you going to do? And then that sets off this slime block launch up here we get the villager dispense. The villager AI takes a ridiculously ridiculously long time to notice the zombie but gets there eventually runs away it's fine Kevin. Um, and then we come to this bit which uses the infinite TNT duplication exploit. Um, I had some fun with this. There's some terrain here 
that I actually rebuilt because I had some uh, TNT accident, let's just say. Um, which is why this, this obsidian box was added afterwards. Um, that and the fact that occasionally some of this redstone here would get blown up. So this is based on my own uh, smooth stone generator, which I have a tutorial for. I stripped out the second half because I, it was too much of a pain to work out a way to merge the two streams of stone. Um, but the circuitry back here is my own one that I have a tutorial of that's from like years ago. Um, so that just generates smooth stone, TNT drops down, blows it up. Uh, this water here was because occasionally some of this, the cobble would land on the edge there and stay there. And I was like, why waste that? And okay, I'm going to go and shut this off. Because it's run out of meat. Uh, yeah, so that just blows that up. And then once enough of it collects into here, it sets off this redstone. That fires along here, up here, into another one of these spiral staircase things. Did you find the secret room? Over here, again one of these things, just to be certain. Uh, this comes along here, sets off the dispensers, sets out the water, which harvests the chorus plant. Once enough of the chorus fruit collect in here, uh, it triggers this. This actually starts with some chorus fruit in it just so it doesn't take so long, I think. I dig it around with the, the quantities and how long it would take and stuff. And then we have the Tuxedo Matic 9000 Mark III, which is just a set of dispensers. There would be a fourth one there, but no helmet was needed because we've got a player skull on the armor stand. And then we get to here, that sets off those, which has the fireworks in it. Uh, also goes all the way down there to set off the beacons, goes up here, sets off the meat shower, meat. And also, you might not be able to tell what this was. There were a stack of carpets going all the way up here. It was all just a stack of carpets. Coming up to here, we have the detector, and the two armor stands were on these blocks which were extended into these positions. So they retracted, they dropped down, they bounced on the slime box. And this piston, all it does is push the carpet out to break the, break the stack. Um, I had to carve out this tree to clear the path of the firework. And then the last piece is, of course, the beacons. The circuitry just comes down here, retracts these blocks, which lets the beacons shine through. So that's all there is there. Um, the only other thing to show you then would be... Can you see it? This is... Not the secret room. <laughs> it's the more visible one, and it's not the one you're looking for. The one you're looking for is in fact... This, this little indent in the wall was already here on the map provided. I used it. So we have a nice little slime block door there, uh, nothing too complex, and cookies and cups of tea for anyone who finds it. So that's that. That's the build. As I say, I reckon it was around 16 hours of work, and Mumbo really liked it, and it was that one launcher. Knowing that I had trouble with it, I probably should have made it double pulse or something. I don't know. I had time to. It's a shame I didn't think to, you know, safeguard it more. Because that one is an absolute arse. Okay, let's go to my test world where I came up with most of these ideas. So we have the red beacons indicating redstone pieces. Um, this was the little spiral staircase thing, just to remind me of it. We've just, we've just got a slip gate to go around in a circle forever. Um, you can see some of my other builds from the season 2 of the server. This is my uh, fishing emporium, here's my zombie grinder, 
Um, this one is other zombie testing I was doing, I think. Um, that was meant to be for a squid farm. That was just testing boats on ice, I think. Got some command block stuff I test out. Uh, we've got all sorts of random crap. That was for the Slipcator Wiki, the article on the side torches. Uh, there's the witch farm tunnel. There's my miscellany shop, my sundries. Uh, this one... Anyway, I'm getting distracted, sorry. We've, we've got stuff I've built and tested. It's it's good times. Um, anyway, yeah, the red beacons. So we've got the little spiral staircase -y thing. We've got the... Uh, this was the initial version of the witch one, and it backed up so horribly because there was too many drops for the hoppers. So that's when I went to having the seven separate columns. This was... oh yeah, yeah. We weren't... we decided in the end not to allow destroying the armor stand. But this was a little idea I came up with for it. Where the, the skull is transferred to another armor stand. Good fun, that one. And then it would come round, and because I, I built these little test pieces to be repeated. Um, this was a TNT launcher, which works fine on here, and I'll show you how well it works. That's how many, the number of items there is how many times this thing triggered on a loop successfully, which means the launch worked perfectly to get him up there and then drop him back down to this water stream. Um, this worked flawlessly really did. And then for some reason on Spigot it didn't work. No idea what that's about, but I was going to use this. This was one of the first things, I think. Um, here we have the, uh, the, the chicken thing. Um, originally I was going to use the mechanic of water on top of magma blocks, um, evaporating and causing block updates. And I just had a massive array of observers over the top of a, a magma block um, floor with water. Um, and then I discovered this bug, and that simplified things considerably. I say bug, I'm assuming it's a bug, because it's just such an oddly specific little thing. Um, this was initial ideas on the mob stuff. This was something I didn't end up using as such. Uh, the idea on this one is... It just makes them hop up and down. I didn't end up using it. Um, this was sort of the final form of the mobs one. I didn't end up doing it all in one thing like this, obviously. But this was sort of the final design of it, which I then built out into separate pieces. Yes, exactly. Um, why are there so many creepers there? That's odd. The villager must have been jumping up and down. Um, rails stop mobs mostly, because the mob AI is designed to not walk over rails. So that's why the rails are there. And this was me trying to fathom out why some of my slime block pushers would sometimes leave the slime block sticking out. It just seems to be a positional thing and not even a reliable positional thing. Like It's not directional. It's just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, that's a chicken thing. TNT launcher. Uh... This... was just random bit of slime block testing, I think. I tested pushing um, so through portals and stuff. There's all sorts here. Um, that was trying to push it upstairs. This one was fun. Um, armor stands will not get into minecarts. However, they will... Actually, let's just... Uh, what's this one? Oh, this was... Actually, this was the very first thing I tested. Um, 
trying to get mobs. This is a mob cannon, so cows were spawned in there and or were stored up here and dropped in. And on a player that works, it fires you out really fast. It doesn't work on armor stands, mobs don't push them. Uh, where's the thing I'm after? Oh yeah, this is it. Um, yeah, they won't go in minecarts. Let's... Do this the quick way. Modang, please make it so that it doesn't include the Minecraft prefix in the search bar, because you're looking for minecart and you have to go all the way to that. I suppose you could just go cart, but... Uh, yeah, okay. My car. Ah! Okay, there isn't going to be a quick way of doing this. I just need enough to show the thing working. That'll do. Right. So, armor stands, right? They won't go in minecarts anymore, but... Minecarts will push them. Very, 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 very slowly. It took... I tested this, and it takes so many minecarts, which is why I didn't use this thing. Um, it's ridiculous, but it would have worked. It just would have taken forever. Okay, what else is there? This video is longer than I expected, which is silly, I should have expected it. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Where's the final form of the witch farm one? Here it is. Yeah. This is pretty much as is, really. This is, this is the final design that I used, basically. So there's not that much to say about it, that I've already explained. Uh, this was where I designed this thing. Or where I designed the original version of it and then I improved it over here. And I think... Oh yeah, this was, this was for anvils. I considered uh, doing some anvil fun. This worked out pretty well. I don't know how well it would have worked out on the actual thing. I mean, this wasn't planned in any way. This was see where it's going to land and, you know, that's, that's all, that's all. Oh, I hate that. Why does it destroy the button? So that, that, it literally is a case of where does it land and with what timing. Um, I guess, oh yeah, and the final little thing is the Tuxedo Magic 9000 MK2 on this world. Why not? Um, so anything that I haven't shown you in this world is something I added during the build rather than invented beforehand. And that's really all there is to it. So I hope you found this interesting. And thanks for watching.